Welcome to the first demo game for Troika, uh, a game developed by John Denham, which turns chess upside down, creating a wargaming scenario where it's not pawns lined up in lines, but a de democratic um, guerrilla warfare style uh, battle where each piece is capable of taking on a major important role and where checkmates are potentially quite common um, and are a part of the game throughout. What I'm going to do today is walk you through a simple short game um, which shows off the basic gameplay um, in just a few moves. You start with counters which are look the same as chess uh, draft pieces um, and then as each counter moves, on its first move it's allowed to convert to one of the chess pieces. Uh, initially these have to be either pawns, knights or bishops. Um, on your fourth piece you're allowed to have a rook and from the fifth piece you're allowed to have a queen. So white traditionally goes first so let's kick off and let's see what white does first. So the first move it could be any counter on of whites and it's g3 to h2 which just does that converts to a bishop that the point of that move is to ensure that something on the black side is being attacked in this case it's two counters which is fine because it's a starting move um, so whatever happens there's going to be black is going to have a chance to convert something into a knight as well and in this case it's e5 moving to f5 um, which gives it a knight. Uh, what that does is it attacks two pieces, two counters, one of them has to move and the white player chooses d4, moves it to c5 and converts it to a pawn. Now a pawn is a surprisingly powerful um, piece in Troika. Um, it's thought of as weak and disposable but in Troika it dominates um, eight squares around it and takes up quite a lot of the board um, and can be a, a significant inconvenience to your opponent. So um, that attacks three pieces and therefore one of them has to move um, and the one that's chosen is b6, moves to b7 and becomes a bishop, b6 to b7 becomes a bishop, which is again designed to attack a few of the white pieces, in this case two. It would have been better if it had attacked um, some of the powerful pieces, um, but this will do at this stage of the game. White decides to move f3 to f4, um, which simply creates a pawn. Um, that's what the white player chooses to turn it into, which actually is a pretty weak move. Um, it's, um, well, it, it, it's adequate, it forces black to move and that's the point. Uh, so black has to move and actually I think this is probably uh, a mistake by black because black takes a counter which is fine you've taken a counter you've uh, removed one of the opponent's pieces but you haven't taken the opportunity to do anything that would give you more powerful pieces and you've given white the opportunity to now have a free move because that knight doesn't attack any white piece. So white goes on the offensive of course uh, moving a4 to b4 and turning it into a rook. That attacks two powerful pieces, one of them has to move um, and neither of them can do anything useful because the bishop can't take that counter because it's defended by the rook. Um, in fact um, what happens is that uh, knight on h4 just has to make a move doing very little, it moves to g2 um, thereby attacking two pieces um, but hasn't achieved very much uh, because it's, it would be better if it had just attacked one. That gives uh, white an opportunity to move one of its, its, its count, to move its counter from e1 to d2 and it's now able to create a queen because it has enough counters on the board, it's allowed to do so. Um, 
that attacks three pieces, um, giving plenty of room for manoeuvre for the rook, uh, but the rook uh, for the knight, but he can't take that pawn because it's defended. Um, instead, black moves d8 to e7 there and turns it into a rook. Um, that's actually quite a good move. Um, it attacks one counter and there are limits to where it can move. Well, not that many limits, okay, so it has to move and it is able to turn into something e4 to f5 and becoming a knight. Um, white has managed to accrue more powerful pieces and that puts it in a strong position now. Um, part of the reason was that knight took the counter and didn't do anything to put white on the back foot. Having done that, um, that is attacking only one piece. It's attacking the rook and therefore the rook has to move and he moves to h7. Which is good because he's attacking a powerful piece so therefore has to move and moves to e5. Okay, which attacks two counters and that's black's chance. Black has a chance now to turn f6 into e6 and create a queen. That is a bit of a bit of a comeback from Black. It's got its queen on the board um, and attacking three pieces, all of which are powerful. Uh, but that gives White plenty of chances to do something interesting. And what it does is moves its rook from b3 to b2, b. It's counter from b3 to b2, that's right. So the queen moved there, and that is why the counter is moving. Um, so there was a choice of three pieces to move, different ones than I said. Counter moves there to reveal a rook on b2, which attacks two powerful pieces, forcing them to move. Um, and what black does is b7 to c8. So retreats a bit, um, only attacking the knight. So the knight has to move f5 to d4. Good. So there we go, we're in the middle, we've got a lot of white pieces, taking up a lot of the board, making life difficult for black, and attacking two pieces, one's the queen, but can the counter move? Well, there's a rook there stopping it going left, and there's a queen there stopping it going right, so that counter can't move, um, meaning that the, the queen has to move. So the uh, queen moves to h3. Um, which only attacks one piece, this one, which has moved to c4 to create a pawn. Now that's interesting because that pawn only attacks one piece which can't move. It can't move to the uh, forward because of queen, bishop and pawn. It can't move diagonally because of the knight and therefore black is forced to give up a whole turn remove that piece and replace it with what's called a calf counter. So that's a, a substitute. White goes in there and white gets another go. So that's the power of checkmating even a pawn. Um, having done that, um, white gets another go. So d5 to d6. Um, and a chance to create another pawn there. which causes huge problems for black because it attacks two pieces, neither of which can move. He's got a rook and a queen there, stopping either of them from getting out. And you've instantly got rid of two pieces. Now, that seems like it's all going in white's favour, but it creates more opportunities for black to move. Black can now move in, take a piece. It's got more things it can checkmate. 
Um, so there can be a chance for black to come back now. It's up to white really to maintain the pressure and to not give black a chance to get on the front foot. Um, having done that, um, white has another go, so moves um, a pawn f4 to g5 in that, and let's see what happens. That's attacking three pieces, isn't it? Um, so what happens to them? I have a feeling like one of those black counters may have moved. Um, Counters on g6 and h5 are replaced. I think the counter has been accidentally moved, um, and it's these two counters which get replaced with white. Um, now, so that's another chance for white to keep on pressing ahead with this uh, invasion across the board, and uh, the next move by white is um, b2 to a2 um, with a rook b2 to a2 which attacks two pieces um, and that one can't move because of the two rooks and that uh, can't move there, there, or there, or there and that's that, it's uh, the Yeah, the knight and the counter have to be replaced. Amazing. Um, so we're on the home straight for white. Um, I think there is probably a winning move already, um, but I think um, white's got one or two things it wants to do. It wants to move uh, a bishop on C, or a queen on D2 to c1, forcing a bishop to move, and can the bishop move, it can't move, um, there or there, there or there, there, or there, and it can't move on to its own queen, so we've got rid of the black bishop. Um, with one move left to take, um, G2 moves to G1, becomes a knight, and attacks the queen. And the queen can't move up because of the rook, can't move down because of the rook. Um, and can't move there because of that bishop which means checkmate on the queen and the game is over, white has won.